What's up guys, Justin here with the Character Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna get started using Character Creator 4 to create characters in 3D. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, we're gonna kick off using Character Creator 4. And so when you first pop it up, it's going to look something like this. Um, side note, if you do wanna download Character Creator, um, give it a try. You can do that through my link at thecharacteressentials.com slash character creator. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I will receive a commission. But in this case, what we wanna do is we're gonna open this up and the first thing you're gonna get is you're gonna get this little splash screen right here. Um, and uh, you've got options in here for a product demo video, training resources. There's a number of great training resources on Realusion's website, as well as some freebies and iClone. For right now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna close this. Um, if you don't want that to show up again, you can check the box for don't show again. But basically what we have here is we have a 3D space from which we can start creating characters. Characters. And so let's take a quick look at the workspace overall. So on the left hand side of the page, you've got your content section. Your content section is going to give you access to a couple different things. It's going to give you access to your library content that you can bring in, right? So for example, you've got all these character models that you can bring in um, if you want to drag them into your scene, as well as all of the other things that you're going to add to your character, right? Everything from like hair options, to clothing options, to uh, different animations that you can apply. All of those are going to be over here in the content browser. So you can use this in order to see all of these and bring them into your scene in a little bit. Now there are options up here for being able to sort through different things, which we're not gonna worry too much about for right now, just know that they are in here. So we've also got access to information about our scene, right? You can toggle different things on and off, like lights, skies, cameras, other things like that. And then if you have Headshot, you can access Headshot in here. Um, this is basically the tool that's designed to help you automate creating characters from photos. But that's kind of the left-hand side of the page. Top of the page, you've got kind of your typical things that you would see at the top of a 3D application. You've got things like tools for changing or animating inside of your space, right? So you've got the orbit function right here. And let's go ahead and let's drag a character in. So we'll just go to the CC project. And for now, let's just bring in the Camilla facial demo. So I'm just gonna click and drag this um, in order to add her to my 3D workspace right here. Um, and so this is mostly just so you can see what we're gonna be able to do in this workspace here. But we'll drag a character in, and then we're going to be able to do things like access the orbit function right here, or pan, um, as well as having the ability to do other things having to do with like the speed of the rendering, right? So I can, uh, I can bring down the level of detail that's in here depending on what we're trying to do. So you're gonna be able to access different things like that. You're also going to be able to access things having to do with the global illumination or the lighting in your scene, which make a huge difference in the way that things look. So um, basically you're gonna be able to access different tools and different things from right here. There are also toolbars up here, which give you access to even more things. And then over here on the right, you're going to have functions for making changes and adjustments to your models, right? So we've got things like uh, being able to load a neutral base, which is just going to be kind of a kind of a bland character, which we'll take a look at in a second, as well as giving you access to things like editing the pose or editing the morphs, which is basically how you adjust like the size of the character, right? Different things about the character. So this is where you're going to access different things about things in the viewport that you can change and adjust. Now there are also options in here for different preferences. One that I usually change and adjust is I like to set my orbit to the middle mouse button so that I can click and hold the middle mouse button. So in order to do that, you can just set your orbit to none here and middle mouse button over here. And then I also like to set my hand to be um, left mouse button and right mouse button. Um, I tried to set this to be shift and middle mouse button, but for some reason it won't let me do that. So instead I have just left mouse button and right mouse button in order to pan in my viewport. Um, and then down below you've got the animation player. What the animation player is going to do is it's going to allow you to play the animation that's associated with your character down below. So you can use this to see 
different times. You can kind of scrub through this by clicking and dragging other things like that. But let's go ahead and let's create a neutral character. And so to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a new project. So we're gonna go to File, New Project. Um, we're gonna go ahead and discard this one. And um, now we have nothing in here. Right, and so your options are, you can either start with an actor that's already over here, right? So you can download different actors and bring them in. Um, so there's different characters kind of like pre-built in here that you can build on top of. When you're learning, I kind of recommend that you start there, um, but you can either drag an actor in over here or there's an option over here on the right-hand side for load a neutral base. And so when you bring that character in, everything about them is going to be neutral. I've gone ahead and thrown some clothes on this one. Um, just, uh, I've gone ahead and dragged some clothes on top of this one just, just for the sake of having that on here. But from here, what you can do is you can start making changes and adjustments to this character, right? And so one way that you can do that is you can jump over into your morphs right here. Your morphs are going to give you access to different things about this character, right? So if I click on this character, for example, notice how I have options for being able to adjust a ton of different things about this character, right? Notice how I can kind of click through here like this, and um, you can either adjust the individual parts and pieces, right? Or you can access the full body. So for example, if you wanted this character to be more of a female character, notice how there's a morph in here for CC3 plus neutral female. And so if I drag this, right, notice what this is going to do is this is going to apply the neutral female to this character. And so notice how that makes the anatomical changes in here um, that you would expect um, for a female character. On the other hand, if you wanted this to be a male character and you wanted to start just something like that, notice how you can use the slider in order to create like the neutral male. And if you wanted to do that, obviously you would want to change the clothes. Um, but either way, you can use this as kind of a building block. And then you can come in here and you can start making changes to different things about the character. So for example, say that you wanted her to be a little stronger looking. Notice how you can adjust things about like the shoulders, other things like that. But um, the cool thing about this is there are also kind of like pre-set morphs in here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just drag a different set of clothes on this character um, like this. And we're going to make this more of a male character. So we're going to go back to the body. We're going to turn off the female. We're going to turn on maybe like the body bodybuilder right here. And we can go ahead and right click in here. We can select the clothing item and we can delete it out. But notice what that's done is that's come in here and that's kind of applied um, the bodybuilder look to this model. And so when you do that, obviously you would want to come in here and you would want to adjust the head as well. So you notice how you can adjust this into more of like a neutral male, or there's different kind of male presets in here that you can use as well. But a lot of what you're going to do in here is going to be associated with the different morphs and being able to use those morphs in order to make that character look different ways. And so let's go with a female character actually. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the clothes and notice how there's some clothes pre-built into this library, right? So there's different shirts, um, there's different pants, other things like that. And you can actually click and drag these in here on top of your character, right? So let's say for example, that we wanted to drag in one of these sweaters. You can just drag that on top of this character right here. And notice how those clothes are going to be applied to that character. And there's a ton you can do with making those actually like conform properly to your character. We're not gonna worry too much about it for right now, but we can do that. And then let's say that we wanted to drag maybe like a knee length skirt or something like that on the character right now, just cause those are what's actually built into this. So um, you're gonna be able to drag different clothes on top of your character. And so you can click and drag different clothes on here like this on your character as well. And so there's a ton of changes and adjustments you can make to pretty much everything, right? You can adjust like the skull height and width. Um, you can set the face. So if we go to like cheekbones, right? You can adjust the cheekbones of the character so that they look a little bit more hollow. For example, you can set them to be higher or lower like this. So pretty much everything about the character 
you can adjust and change. You can make noses bigger or smaller. Um, you can just, you can basically use these morphs to make this character look the way that you want them to look. And so say that you wanted to come in here and adjust something like the color of the skin of this character, you could come over here into the settings right here under your materials and notice how there's an option here where you can, if you pick one of these skin options, so base, like the base skin, for example, and you scroll down, there's an option for adjusting the skin color. And so when you activate this, right, there's options down here for selecting different skin presets like this. So you can use this in order to adjust the color of the character's skin right here. But then you could also come in here and make some changes, right? If you wanted that to be redder, you can adjust kind of the tints and the other things contained in the skin like this. Right, so you can darken the skin if you want to. You can really do whatever you want, but you can come in here and you can either make those adjustments manually, or if we come over here into the um, skin presets right here, notice how there's different options for different skin presets. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on apply on this in order to see what that does, but notice how that's actually gonna come in here and that's going to overwrite what you have for the skin and use those presets instead. So the presets are a really easy way um, to set up different skin colors and other aspects about your skin. Um, you can also drag hair onto your model. So let's scroll down for example, and we can go ahead and we can pick any of these. Um, that's what makes this so cool. I can, I can click right here and drag this hair on. I can drag this hair on. You can really make the hair whatever you want it to be within the different hair styles that are in here. Now, um, I know there's different ways to kind of edit and adjust that. We can get into that a little bit in a future video, but you can see how this is actually really realistic and um, it actually looks really good. The way the hair is shaded, the way the sun kind of like, or the light kind of bounces off this is actually really cool. And say that you wanted to adjust the character's hair, for example, you can click in here and you can select the hair. So we want to go over into our materials. We want to go to the base hair. And so there's a bunch of different things that you can do in here, but notice how I can adjust things like the root color versus the end color. So if I wanted this to be more of like a blonde character or something like that on the ends, we can go ahead and we can make that change and we're going to select multiple different pieces of hair. But if you scroll down and check the box for activate hair color, what you can do is you can make adjustments and changes, right? So if I wanted this to be a little bit blonder or something like that. And so there's a ton of things you can do to make adjustments to this hair. And we're not gonna get too much into that right now, um, but you can see how adding that hair and making those changes is really easy. And so the other thing that you can do is you can also animate this character. So let's go ahead and let's put some shoes on her, first of all. So we can go ahead and pick like these heels, for example, um, just because they probably fit with this outfit. But if you scroll down, notice how there's options for animations. And so you've got different animations built in that you can apply to this character, right? So there's animations, but there's also poses. Um, we're going to focus mostly on the animation just for what we're doing right here. And so we're going to go into the human female section and let's say we wanted to apply an animation where she like opens curtains right i can click and drag this on top of this character well now if i click on play notice how that animation is going to be applied to this character right so you can use this in order to quickly animate your characters and create 3d character animations in here um, and you can do multiple different character animations right so there's some kind of like built in here Right, so if we go into the acting female, we could just set this to like a walk animation that's already kind of built in here. Now, if you click on this, your character is going to walk. So you can apply different animations in here really easily to this character. And so we'll go ahead and we'll just set her to an idle animation and let's export this to an animated video file. Okay, and so I'm gonna apply just a idle animation right here um, just so that she's kind of like standing there but she's doing something she's not just like standing still and what i want to do is i want to export an animation and so to do that you can go up to render and you need to stop the animation before you do that but you can go to render and you can click on render 
video. What that's going to do is that's going to pop up a little window right here that's going to allow you to export this. Now, you're going to want to pay attention to a lot of these settings. We can talk about them more in a future video, but in general, I want this to have a final render quality, right? Um, I'm not really going to worry too much about these options right here. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to export all 1900 frames of this animation, right? I just want like a little animation where she stands around and kind of like looks around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to maybe like 360 frames right here. So you can set it to all, but then that's going to export this entire animation, which I don't necessarily want. Um, the other thing that you might want to do is you might want to adjust your frame size right here. So we're just going to set this to be like a 1920 by 1080. And you can see that inside of your viewport right here, the size of the output. But then once you've got this all kind of set up the way that you want, you can click on the option for export and pick a location and that's going to render this out. And when it's done, it's going to ask if you want to export this media and I'm going to say yes. When I do that, you can see how I've got this animated character standing in my scene kind of looking around. And while this is a very simple animation, I think you can see that it would be really easy to kind of like apply this um, to creating much more complex scenes and animations. All right, so we'll get more in depth with these settings in a future video, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, if you're using this tool, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to check out Character Creator, I will link to it on this page. Note that that is an affiliate link. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.